Thank you once again for joining us. Thank you, Winston. And I'm sure for many of uh, many persons, they may have suspected that you are the man behind the mask. But now we know you are the man behind the mask. Now we know you want to be president. This is Ghana. It's a country where we know it's NPP or NDC. And so when the NPP fails, many Ghanaians look to the NPP. I mean, when the NPP fails, many Ghanaians look to the NDC. When the NDC fails, many Ghanaians look to the NPP. Mm. Why do you want to be president within such a political system? Well, there are numerous reasons why I want to be. And first of all, I think, you know, the NPP and the NDC system has been going on for almost four decades. So that's really my lifetime. <laughs> you know, and one would have expected more change you know, in terms of human development and social development. You know, myself, I'm a developer, I'm an investor, and I've tried to develop landmarks in the country, but, you know, the pace of development, I feel like we're still running behind schedule. And I feel like the younger you are, the stronger, the more focused you are with development, with investment, you know. The older you get, you become wiser, but you will not stand in the sun to want to develop a country or develop a place. So, you know, I feel like at this point and at this age, you know, I'm in the right position, I'm in the right um, frame of mind to be able to contribute to the development of my country and add value to the people, you know, create jobs and, you know, expand the country. I feel like also the time has come for, you know, the, the, the elders to, you know, bring the youth into the system of governance, you know, to see you know, what happens in the 40s, what we can do for our people. And that is one. Um, the second reason is also I feel like the millennials, you know, uh, we are the lockdown generation. In the past four years, we've seen a lot in this world, and a lot of people are looking for change. You know, you can see it's probably a global revolution going in all places. Young people are becoming presidents and leaders because it resonates with the youth, and more of these people are around the world. Um, these are people even if they see an ant, they don't want the ant being killed because they feel like they have a life and you should let them be, you know, and I think the world is drifting towards this side. So, yeah, go ahead. so these are the people that I also stand for and I relate to and I feel like my people are ready. So, you know, I'm just preparing for them mm. so they can push us. Now you've talked about you being a developer. I mean, you've talked about you being a builder. What is it that you want to do? that you cannot do unless you become president? Well, <coughs> being a president, it's not a position that will make you do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But it's, it gives you room, it gives you the authority, it gives you the support, the laws, the conditions for you to be able to uh, nationally create a developmental scheme that will be suitable for the public, you know, so uh, me being a developer, I'm just restricted to just develop uh, maybe a project. But uh, for me to go into national projects, like, you know, building museums, zoos, markets, you know, industrial platforms, you know, I still need the government's sponsorship and their support to be able to get there. So uh, there is that part, and then there is the partnership with the private sector to also expand the development in the country. You know, it's just numerous of things that, you know, being in that position, but not just being a, pres a president, but being a part of a government and understanding the the pros and cons in, in the private sector, in the public sector, what needs to be done in terms of development, human development and social development. So talking about partnership you're within the private sector, there's a, I mean as a country we've talked about the private sector being the engine of growth for God knows how long. Can't you partner government? Can't you partner the public sector in achieving uh, I mean, those dreams and aspirations that you have? Well, <coughs> I guess I'm not the only developer in the country. There are quite a lot of people like me. You can mobilize all of them? Um, if, if that could work, it would have probably happened some years back. You know, I think there are some kind of cracks, you know, within the parties. You know, it's who is in power and who they know. You know, and that's how the country is working right now. And I think we should be able to neutralize that. You know, we should be able to give everybody the chance you know to come through it doesn't have to be the fact that MPP is in power so some particular people would have the chance to you know to um, have more opportunities in, in the private sector or it doesn't have to be the other party and then the other people come in I think 
we as a country everybody should have the opportunity to be able to explore themselves and the government should be able to also concentrate on the development of the private sector because that's what really booms the economy that's what builds the economy you know if these people are growing in the industrial sector in the commercial sector then of course the economy definitely becomes stable and the uh, balance is created so tell me um what's wrong with ghana today and how do you intend to change that thing which you see as wrong with the country? Well, I, I'm probably not the only one that um, might be finding things that are wrong with the country. And I'm not saying other countries doesn't have wrong things happening in there. Almost every country are facing issues, but they find solutions to be able to make living better. You know, um, we are here because we feel like if we're able to create a middle class economy, all these problems will stop because we'll be able to move the people from, you know, uh, minimum salary to an average salary, and that alone, you know, will start to robust the economy.